Hey, everybody. Thank you for joining us for another video. I am back with Kurt Soloff. Hey, Kurt, thanks for joining us. Absolutely. Glad to be back. Well, I'm sure glad to have you on speed dial because uh, this was a hand I played recently on Fumbridge. And um, the, the auction posed a, a couple questions. Um, I think I made my way through the auction okay, but I felt very confused and um, I ended up relying on, I wonder if other folks do this as much as I do when I'm playing online, clicking on this bid, see, oh, what does that mean? No, all right, what about this one? Oh no, it says I have a six card spade suit. Okay, can't do that. All right, go back. What about this one? Okay. So <laughs> playing online, I can get away with that, but hopefully you can uh, help uh, help help me uh, prepare for not relying on those hints. Yeah, absolutely. And and there, uh, there I think, are a number uh, of things to discuss uh, about this auction. All so, right, let's uh, pull up the hand. Here it is here. Okay. And uh, I, I, this hand is um, standard American bidding. Um, I think these questions will relate to uh, everyone who plays, but even if uh, you play or bid ACL, um, I'm sure you play online and you encounter folks who uh, will bid standard. So, um, but let's keep the question in mind, especially once we get to the Q bid, if there'll be any difference for ACL players. Sure. So uh, West has a minimum but uh, normal looking heart opening. Uh, and certainly uh, North doesn't have much to say. Uh, not initially, anyhow. Uh, the East hand is kind of interesting. And I was actually wondering uh, if um, usually if you're going mm -hmm. to bid a no Trump in this situation, uh, it, it almost uh, requires that your partnership be playing a forcing no Trump. Because right. you know, what, what is East doing over here? It's a very weak hand yeah. uh, that, that actually doesn't even have to bid, right? I mean, I think a lot of people would just pass one heart. Yeah. But we could argue the merit of bidding if we can do so without getting partner too excited. Now, if we raise to two hearts right away, yeah, Wes might expect something a little more constructive over there, right? I see. Uh, so sometimes what you'll see here, and uh, this is what I, I thought was was going on, uh, was that East was trying to bid a forcing no Trump. And then after West responded to that, the plan would be to retreat to two hearts, which usually conveys a weaker hand with only a doubleton, an opener's uh -huh. major. Uh -huh. And that's a way that you can kind of slow the auction down, not get right. opener too excited about your hand. Uh, and... I think if there is some merit to making a really light response, it's exactly because of the situation we're looking at here. Yeah. If East passes, South has a very easy one spade bid, right? Yeah. One no Trump, I think, complicates that a little bit for South. And one of your questions for me was, well, what do you think about this two spade bid? We're a level higher. You've got a nice hand, but... It's not a great suit, right? Yeah. So I will tell you that I would also bid two spades here. Uh, now there might be a little trepidation uh, because of the suit quality. But if you think about it, you're a favorite to actually get spade support from partner on this hand. You probably have an eight card or better fit. Why? Right. Well, East one East bit of one no normally denies holding four spades. Right. Um, now I suppose West could have four spades uh, along with those hearts, and I'm not going to tell you that you are uh, completely immune to getting yourself into trouble by overcalling a Jack Ten Fifth suit like this. Yeah. But you know, I think you got to take your shot, uh, and when you have the boss suit, when you have the spades. I, I like to get them into the auction with any excuse. It's kind of how I feel. So, I, I mean, I suppose you might think about double, but then what if partner bids clubs? Yeah, you only have a doubleton in support, right? So you, double could be problematic. I think the, the spade overcall is probably the least of the evils. And um, I, I feel like it's a little too good to pass. You know, I, right, that's, I, I, that's, that's reassuring. <laughs> yeah. I, Hey, what I always tell people, Bajir, I would rather see you uh, stick your neck out a little bit, 
even if it gets you into trouble, than to uh, uh, hide in cowardice and pass uh, with pretty good hands. Because look, what one of the things East is trying to do this this one no is a bit of a tactical bid. It it is uh, it is an effort to uh, try to keep you out of the auction. Frankly. Mm. All right. So so great. We we got in. Tell us about partners response to our overcall. All right. So for North to Qubit here, uh, the opponent's suit, uh, this has to be a spade raise. And now again, of course, North doesn't have to bid. You've just overcalled, but you know, decent nine point hand here for North, excellent spade support. In fact, North is probably wondering, hey, what kind of suit is partner overcalling over there when I've got the ace queen. Right. Uh, and if we look at any other assets in that North hand, uh, the King of Hearts, probably well located, right? In other words, since West opened a heart, who's the favorite to have the ace? West. So that ace is on side. And if South has to lead a heart up toward the king, then the ace is favorably placed for declare. Now it turns out South has the Queen of Hearts. So this doesn't, you they always have a heart winner, right? Um, there are different ways North can raise. A simple raise to three spades, that would be more of a courtesy raise. That would be a, a, a slightly lesser hand than this with spade support. But so, so this is uh, telling us we have a spade fit and North has a bit of strength. Right. This, this is the better, if you, if you were to raise one of two different ways, you could raise the three spades immediately or you could bid three hearts, which pretty much promises spade support, right? Why can you afford to Q-bid three hearts? Because you are willing to at least go to three spades on this hand. Does the Q-bid say anything about partner's heart suit? Uh, oh, about, about the opponent's suit? Yeah. Um, it, no, uh, no, it, it is, it is purely artificial. Uh, and, uh, you know, it is Not the even one a shortage, nothing. It's, it's really only about the spade fit and having a little bit extra, which is why partner didn't just bid three spades. Right. Yeah. Okay. A North judge that probably thought, Hmm, if my partner can bid two spades freely over their no Trump, uh, without an amazing spade suit, he must have some other stuff over there. He must have some good cards in the minors or something like that. Uh, right. So North is is putting South on a on a, a decent hand, either yeah. in terms of high card points or maybe South just has a very distributional hand. That's a possibility yeah. too. Okay, so it ends up coming back to us, and this is where <laughs> I was telling you I was clicking on the different bids saying, I don't know how to respond to this Q-bid. Uh, can I just bid four spades? Uh, do I bid the three spades? It was only through clicking on the different ones that I settled on three no trumps. The Looking back at the results afterwards, it looked like folks who played it, and it, it, it maybe this is evidence of this being a common point of confusion, it was pretty evenly split between those who bid three no trump here and those who bid three spades. The folks who bid three spades were left in three spades. The folks who bid three no trumps partner ended up taking us to game. Yeah. And, uh, you know, three no trump. Uh, I, I mean, you the one thing you don't know when you bid three no, uh, that that would be a, a bit of a gamble, I suppose, uh, because you do only have Queen Doubleton of West's known five card major. Uh, yeah. three, no, three no Trump actually appears like it will work on this hand uh, since partner has some help in hearts and you're not wide open there. Um, but if you have a, uh, if you have the major fit, especially with here, what turns out to be a nine card major fit, uh, that would be the better choice of games between the two. Um, so yeah, usually when, when partner gives you that Q bid, yeah, most most of the time you're doing one of two things. Yeah. You're retreating the three spades, uh, which would be an attempt to sign off. Okay, you know that would be the eh, partner. Maybe I'm sorry, I bid. I don't want to be any higher, right? Um, right. Or if you are uh, if if you are accepting partner's invitation, which is effectively what the Q bid was here, uh, then yeah, you can you can jump 
right right to four spades. So we uh, we could have gone straight to game. I, if I remember right, and I don't know if it's just my settings or something like that on Funbridge. I'm just getting started on Funbridge. But if if I went straight to game, I think it said I should have a six card spade suit. And so that was the reason I didn't do it. But I don't know. It it felt <laughs> it, 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 I'd be happy to hear that actually just going straight to game would be a good choice here. Yeah, I will tell you that I have not dabbled with Funbridge yet, so I, okay. I don't know uh, I don't know what their um like what their robot settings, you know, how how right. they are all yeah. programmed. Yeah. So, and, and that, we, that you would say a, a, just going straight to game would be fine here. Yeah, I think your hand's good enough. Uh, okay. I, it, it's uh, I, I think I would jump to game on, but you know, I mean, if uh, if partner, uh, if we can believe partner, if we can believe that that cubid, that partner uh, has a legitimate spade invitation, I think uh, I think this is a strong enough hand to accept that invitation. And because we we have a nice strong hand, because partner has expressed. Uh, fit and some strength, it would be a mistake to retreat with that three spade bid, which partner could pass. Right. Yeah. Nor normally when you have, if you've made a bid uh, that is invitational in nature and your partner retreats to the Trump suit at the cheapest available level, generally what we want to do is respect the wishes uh, uh, of a uh, partner uh, who has said, I don't think my hand's good enough to be in game. Okay. Uh, that's helpful, Kurt. Uh, so yeah, interesting auction. I especially want to yeah share my confusion and ask your help for responding to uh, the Qubit, what the Qubit is telling us. But it is an interesting hand to play. Would you mind uh, just taking us through the card play real quick? Yeah, it's uh, it, this uh, turns out to be a pretty friendly hand. Uh, I will tell you that I am not envious at all of West. Uh, this is a, a pretty dreadful hand to pick an opening lead from. Uh, I think I would probably try a diamond um, process of elimination. Uh, I'm not going to sacrifice my king of Trump. Uh, I guess I could lay down the ace of hearts, but I really want that ace to cover a king or queen. Uh, and queen doubleton also could be a very dangerous Maybe. lead. Turns out it wouldn't cost anything on this hand, but I guess by process of, processes of elimination, I, I would probably just lead a fourth best diamond here. Uh, because which, West has to lead something. Yes. <laughs> or you can or you can sit there uh, and wait and wait and wait until somebody tells you, did you know it's your lead? <laughs> <laughs> right. Until you get it. Yes. Like, In fact, I did. I just don't want it to be my lead. Uh, but this this is okay. Uh, it doesn't appear to give anything away uh, for the defense. So I guess we would want to see what, what's going on in the Trump suit. Uh, thinking in terms of losers, uh, we, you know, Dummy showed up with a doubleton diamond, right? So we have our ace and our king, and uh, we might like to try and see if we can get uh, both of our diamonds roughed in the dummy. Uh, now, of course, if we don't draw Trump, there is a danger that East could overrough us, possibly. Um, and we also don't know how the Trump suit is breaking. Uh, so I, I think I would probably go ahead and start with a finesse in the Trump suit. Okay. Uh, and, I, and I think I'd go ahead and play the jack from my hand because if the finesse works, uh, I can repeat it. Cool. And of course, if West covers, um, then we, we, we have, we're, we have the ace on top of it. Right. So let's say West does cover, uh, I, I, I suppose West would, yeah, I mean, West can, can cover or not with only a doubleton. Uh, I, I think West has got to be pretty sure that South has the 10 and that it's not going to matter that they're not going to get anything promoted in their partner's hand. But um, so at least we can figure out now uh, how is the Trump suit splitting? Because our ability to get our diamonds roughed uh, may depend on, uh, uh, you know, we, we need to keep enough Trumps in the dummy to do that. Well, friendly hand, right? If we play a second round of Trump, 
here to our 10, we see that they're 2-2. Two, two. Yeah. All right, that's great. Now Trumps yeah. are out and we'll have no problem whatsoever roughing diamonds. Great. One more sure diamond winner. Rough those last two from south to Norse Trumps. Yeah, so, so at this stage, we're actually home for uh, what appear to be 11, 11 tricks, right? Uh, it looks like we'll lose the ace mm. of hearts. And it looks like we have a slow club loser. Uh, although I would perhaps ask you to put on your match point hat for a moment and ask, how greedy are you feeling? Do you want to <laughs> try and take 12 tricks on this hand? <laughs> but, but because this is uh because we're going live i say let's let's be greedy and see what happens all right well if i was feeling particularly greedy uh um if i was playing on, on my own i i'm <laughs> guessing i would not <laughs> all right well uh so uh, let's say we uh let's let's force out the ace of hearts so we'll start we'll start with the queen here and let's say west grabs that ace and uh, I'm I'm not signaling very carefully here for uh, with the east hand, um, but uh, east is probably over there thinking, boy, I hope partner doesn't notice I bid with only four points. Um, so <laughs> I guess I would at this stage would I now maybe try a club? A partner should have something somewhere. Uh, I, I guess maybe I would play partner for a club honor and uh, and leave my queen here. Okay, well, let's say East says, yeah, I, I like that. At least encouraging, okay. All right, so this is where if, you, if you're feeling lucky, you can still make your club loser go away on this hand. Uh, now, this won't work if East has the Jack of Hearts. But if West has the Jack of Hearts. Oh, neat. How about a finesse of the 10? Hmm. Of course, if this loses, now you're back to only making four spades. Your contract is still safe, right? If this loses to the jack, then they're going to cash their club on you. Uh, if it wins, though, look at what we can do now. <laughs> Gosh, I feel like such a greedy pig. <laughs> <laughs> you're just rubbing, rubbing your noses in it. You, you, they already uh, got lemons. You're uh, giving them even more. Yeah, I mean, you know, you probably did pretty well just to get to your game on this hand. So uh, you might not even uh, you might not even need uh, the uh, the over trick uh, to uh, to get a good result at match points on a hand like this. But yeah, as you can see now, we can finish up with uh, with just a full uh, cross rough here, uh, and uh, we are in uh, we are in great shape. So. Yeah, this would be, uh, I suspect this would be a big winner for you at the table. Yeah, they, um, yeah, they, they might be, might be one of those where they're, they're a little quiet with each other afterwards. <laughs> yeah. Now, uh, notice that if they did happen to find a club lead, uh, on opening lead, you're never going to have a chance to make six. Uh, okay. but they would, they would have to get that club winner set up for the defense before the ace of hearts is out. You know, Kurt, it might be uh, a topic for another video. It's it's one that continues to uh, confuse me, challenge me, and I love asking different teachers this, but when to be greedy and when we should sit back and take the tricks that we know we can get. Um, I continue to be confused about that. I know it's a much bigger topic, so maybe we'll have to find another time to return to it. Yeah, absolutely. And I can tell you the short version is just really what what format are you playing? Are you playing match point pairs? Are you playing Swiss teams? Are you playing knockouts? Uh, because uh, the scoring differences dictate different approaches, both to bidding and to the play of the hand and the defense. Well, I, uh, I look forward to that. I'm sure I'm not the only one. All um, right. Well, thank let's, you let's... so much for uh, helping out with this one. Um, for uh, yeah, the the confusion I I face when I play on my own is a regular experience, and so I'm grateful to have you on on the the in my uh, little black book of fantastic teachers to call. All right. Well, thank you. This was a fun one. Thanks everyone for joining us. Till next time. Thanks, Kurt. <laughs>